Hey guys, Armagun here. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to take apart the CZ858. We're going to disassemble it and I'm going to go through the key features internally just so you guys can see really up close and personal what makes this thing tick. So again, this is a it's similar to an AK, but it's it's well actually it's it's similar to an AK in appearance kind of only. Internally, it works completely different and different mags as well. It is chambered in 762 by 39. So we'll set that off to the side. Remove our mag, prove clear, and we're gonna drop the striker. This is a kind of a striker fire design. Let's do that real quick. Then this rear pin here, which is captive, we're just gonna put that, push that out. It's again, it's, it's retained in there. And then you're just gonna push in with your thumb and in and a bit up. And this rear cover just pops right off. This rear cover here has your springs all in it here, your recoil spring for the bolt and also for the striker. Kind of a, a dual assembly there. When you go to put that back, they correspond with, you know, this big spring goes up in here, your carrier, and this little spring goes down in there. So you just line those up appropriately when they go in. But again, you can see there's no hammer, no hammer there. Basically just a sear that allows a striker to, to pull to flip, fly forward essentially. So anyways, set this aside. Next that comes out is going to be your carrier group. You just pull it back, lifts all right up. And let's see this here. So let's just review how this locks. So when this all goes forward, it's all it's all locked in there. This this little locking block recesses, and then as this the recoil, it's a short stroke operated, gas operated short stroke system. As this begins to move back, this goes back, or the carrier slides back rather, and this little locking block retracts upwards, and then that allows this hole, the bolt to, you know, to cycle. And this is your striker back here. So when, when uh, I'll show you when the gun goes back together, the striker is going to be caught, and then that's what your, your, when you press the trigger, this gets released, flies forward, and that hits your your firing pin in the bolt. So this again just slides right out. Set that aside. Here is your bolt and locking locking collar. I'm not sure the exact technical term for this. And there's your bolt. So again, nothing at all like an AK. Nothing at all. But very well made, nice big heavy extractor there. Just a neat, a neat system. It is a steel receiver, it's milled. And despite that, I mean, that gives you a very nice smooth action. Uh, but despite that, it's lighter than most stamped AKs, typically by up to about a pound, uh, which, is, which is quite neat. So again, what else can we see in here? There's these rails that the action rides on again. Gives it a very nice slick, slick trip. There's your ejector. Basically, when you're when you're pulling, when it, it's extracting the round out, it's going to hit this, and that's what flicks it off before the bolt comes back home and cycles in a new round. There's your chamber, pencil barrel. Nice. It's lightweight. It's very pointable. I can't really comment on point of impact shift at this point. I'd have to shoot this gun a little bit more, heat it up, and, and really check for accuracy. Uh, and to expose the gas system, though, again, it's another retained pin in this front hand guard. This just swings up and pops out. Again, that's kind of similar, kind of similar-ish to an AK. It just hooks in these little locking ears right here. Those little ears is where this thing hooks in and, and goes down. Then for your piston here. We're just going to pull this back, overcome a bit of spring pressure in there. This piston just comes out, spring behind it, and that's it. There's your piston, your short stroke piston, and your spring, and that's where it's going on in there. So I guess I can show you guys a little bit of the travel here. Pop that back in, this will be the reassembly portion. So you can see, 
it comes through there, basically. That's the full travel of the piston. And when it comes through there, it impinges right, you can see the divot right in there on the carrier. And that's what sends the whole thing back. That's what cycles your action. That's what operates the gun. So very different from an AK. In an AK, everything is attached. It's a long stroke. And that's the definition. That's the major difference between a short stroke and a long stroke. Short stroke is contained up further and it impinges on the carrier system where a long stroke is physically attached to the carrier system and makes the, you know, travels the entire cycle of the action. So let's pop this back together. We can just take a little closer look at the carrier. Just a kind of a chunky, big chunky piece of steel. Put our locking collar back on. And that just sits back in here. Now there's a little bit of a groove. You can see a little bit of groove in here to get this back in properly. You just put it in and where is it there? There we go. That's okay. That's back in like this. So we're going to set this back into the receiver and you can see this, this cutouts here. There's a specific spot for this to, to rest in. Okay. So that's in now we're going to push the carrier forward. And you're going to notice that the striker is going to be retained to the rear, which it is right there. Now, when I pull the trigger down, it's going to release that and that can go. So, this all goes, bang, piston cycles, right? This thing comes back, goes back forward. The piston, the, uh, the striker is retained and that's, you know, your semi-automatic function, right? Drop your trigger and the striker will go back home again. So that's the way the gun operates. Pretty, uh, pretty cool, pretty simple. It is again, a very nice, a nice weapon system. It's just, it's a, they're, they're a nice gun to shoot. They're not overly, overly heavy recoiling back in they're very easy to maintain you can see it's very simple to pop everything back on disassembly reassembly very quick again as an as an AK should be and that's the gun you can see it's it, it seems a bit clunky that's just it going over the 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 springs in the in the uh, around the trigger housing but it is a pretty smooth action and this caulking handle is a bit interesting in the way that it's kind of upward angled. So that way you can still kind of grab it from the top, kind of like a Galil. At the same time, it's, you know, it's, it's easy to grab there. I'm not sure actually, I think it's a bit of a compromise. It'd be better if it was just, you know, straight up, like straight out or actually canted downwards. Obviously there's no optics for this thing. It's not in the way of any optics over here. Um, though you can get rails for these things that just screw in here. This would have to be drilled for it, but there's a simple rail and then you get a side mount rail that comes up over the, the dust cover. There, of course, are other versions as well. There's versions of these rear covers that have Picatinny slots in them. You can get hand guards that have Picatinny slots. You can replace this little front sight block with a Picatinny slot for an RMR or something like that. Lots of options. Zahal Org is a great resource for these guys. Lots of aftermarket parts. Lots of fab defense furniture for these guys as well if you want to go modern. This is just the classic look. A classic look for the gun, but uh, this is indicative of how you know an early military VZ58 would have looked. Uh, a lot of the guns for the military also had that beaver barf stock. And you know what? I'm going into too much detail. This is all good details for um, the full overview video, which is going to drop next. So stay tuned for that if you want to know more about the gun. Otherwise, also shout out for Wolverine Supplies. They've done a lot to bring these guns into Canada. These are basically the you know the Canucks AK as AKs were largely banned here. And actually for the bonus gun, we do have another cool Canuck AK, which is the Valmet. And this is a Valmet Hunter. Not a very common gun, but very cool. I guess even less common in 223, which this one is. I'll pop the camera out for you guys here. That's uh, not the best picture. I apologize for that, it's a bit grainy, but nonetheless, Valmet 223, so that guy is chambered in 556. You can also get these guns in 308, uh, 243, and 30-06. And again, this is Valmet, so this is from Finland. Uh, I do have another video. One of the very first videos series I put out on this channel was just a, I went through a bunch of different Valmets, 
quick little overview video on a whole bunch of them. And there's, so there's more information on this gun if you want to go back. But these guns, oh man, these guns are so slick. The actions are so nice on these things. Um, receiver is essentially identical to a Galil receiver, at least internally. A few external differences, but uh, you can literally swap out a, a Galil carrier uh, if you wanted to have the upswept charging handle in this guy. Um, anyways, it's just, it's just a fun fact. But that's it. That's the show for today, guys. Stay tuned. I'm going to have some fun shooting content released tomorrow. Uh, actually, I'm filming this video on Saturday. I got a little bit backed up with my video series this week. So I'm putting this one out. I'll be putting out the main overview either later tonight or Sunday morning. And then I'm going to do a fun video, video, a shooting video for later on Sunday as well for kind of the fun content. Uh, that's, that's it, guys. Thanks a ton. If you guys want to help out the channel, Patreon, subscribe, and some more fun videos for your guys' viewing pleasure. Thanks a ton, guys. Armour Gun out.